Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. MSNBC was absolutely shocked by this, but none of it is really all that shocking or surprising. We've been trying to warn them forever. You far leftoids continue to push further and further and further left. Eventually, the pendulum is going to shift. Eventually, as you continue to become more radical and extreme in your own right, eventually, as you push further on that left side of the spectrum, you're going to create a countering effect. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. This exists in the world of physics and chemistry, but it also exists in the world of culture and society. And we've been trying to warn them. You know, the notion is that the right is becoming extreme. But really, if you take a look at actual political stances, American conservatism, if anything, has become more moderate, trending a little bit more to the center, at least on certain issues, especially social issues. Meanwhile, the left has gone so damn far left, they're basically now open advocating for communism and it's not only in policy and monetary policy and government but in terms of social policy as well advocating for things like gender surgery for young children or abortion all the way up to nine months I mean they've become truly extreme and truly radical and now all of a sudden they're shocked surprised dismayed that Gen Z is moving to the right that there's now a massive counterculture brewing moving against radical leftism and it's brewing with young people on TikTok with Gen Zers. What did you think was going to happen? The idea that anybody should be surprised here is a laughable notion. Anybody who's slightly intelligent and understands basic human society should not be surprised by this in the slightest. But of course, MSNBC is. And let me show you guys exactly what I mean by that. We've got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks, take a look at this. MSNBC pollster shocked that Gen Z people in focus group are hostile towards feminism. Quote, very extremist. Let's just go straight to the clip. Take a look at this. John De La Volpe is the director of polling at Harvard's Institute of Politics. He gathered a group of Gen Zers to ask about movements that have impacted them. Me Too didn't come up until he asked. Feels like forever ago. Um, I was... I think a freshman in high school when that took off all of the allegations. I mean, I honestly forgot that it feels like forever ago. And it's more than just the Me Too reckoning. When it comes to feminism, attendees mostly rejected the label. What does it mean to be a feminist today? That's a really good question. I think there's a certain stigma that goes along with being a feminist, at least in my yeah, mind. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's hear it. Almost this extremist view. I think that a lot of labels are viewed as something that's very extremist. Now, it's not just this apathy to the movement that exists. There's a much darker side that's developed over the last five years, especially with Gen Z males, a total rebellion to any feminist notion whatsoever and a blossoming of misogynistic content with billions of views. There are plenty of people who prey, I think, on these specifically young men trying to lure them in to a community where they can feel better, they can feel some strength, and then that strength turns into a community which has a very different view, I think, of what's right and what's wrong. They talk very openly about their views of, of women and um, the rules around it's okay to women of a particular race as long as they're within our race rather than other women. And once again, what it feels like is that the left is late to the party. They're always five years behind is what it really feels like. You know, I feel like leftists in general can be categorized as being a little bit more emotional and short-sighted. They get so caught up in the now and in these emotional narratives that they lose vision of whatever's beyond right in front of them. They get caught up in these immediate narratives, they get emotional, and they don't think about the long-term consequences. They don't think of what's gonna happen five years down the line. And that's why over and over again, just like the defund the police movement and all of these other ridiculous movements, they think it's a great idea in the moment. They get caught up in the activism and in the emotional pull. And then once everything goes to crap or goes to hell in a handbasket, then they start to pull back and go, whoa, maybe there wasn't such a good idea. Well, we've been telling you from the start, you are going so extreme radical left, especially when it comes to these young movements, that there's going to be an opposite counterculture reaction. And the more 
extreme left you go, the more extreme right the reaction is going to be. That's what we've been saying forever. And the only people who are surprised by this are leftists, who don't exist outside of their own little bubbles. I mean, what do you think's going to happen when you try to reform biology and start this massive cultural craze of children online on TikTok posting videos about being frog people? Call me frog self. My pronouns are frog frogs and frog self. Oh, today I'm feeling like a cake. Call me cake cakes and cake self. What did you think was going to happen? That young people were just going to buy it all hook, line, and sinker? Or that eventually, kids who are seeing this stuff on TikTok and seeing their classmates and seeing their teachers promote this radical ideology were eventually inevitably going to rebel and push against it? Well, that's exactly what we're seeing. Leftoids, you did it to yourself. What did you think was going to happen when you turned feminism into something truly and deeply toxic? When you made it about attacking men and masculinity? masculinity, toxic masculinity, and all these other things. I mean, we've seen the left wage a war on men for a decade and probably longer. What did you think was going to happen? Well, eventually, people like Andrew Tate and others within that orbit were going to start to push back. And this is what we have been warning the left about when it comes to so many of their actions. They talk about fighting extremism, but the irony is they're creating extremism. Oh, how could Gen Zers view feminism as toxic? I wonder. The Trump sign. I don't want to vote for Biden. It feels like voting for a Republican. But I'm gonna do it. You want to know why? Because the alternative is a fascist. A fascist is a fascist. Maybe we can have the conversation about dismantling the two-party system when a fascist isn't running. Maybe we can do that later, kiddo! Champ! Chief! Maybe we can talk about it later! Oh, I wonder how that could backfire and turn feminism into an abomination. You know, feminism started off as equal rights for women. Well, it's morphed into something different. And that's not our fault for pointing it out. And clearly the feminism of today was going to create an opposite force that was going to start pushing back. And that's MGTOW, men going their own way. I'm not part of this group, nor do I endorse the whole black pill movement. But it's inevitable that that was the next logical step. And what about leftists and their anti-free speech crusade? What do you think's going to happen? when you censor views? What do you think is going to happen when you censor narratives that you disagree with? The more you use cultural power and institutions to censor free speech, the more radicalism you will create. When you censor people for having opinions or believing in conspiracy theories, that makes them go down further into the rabbit hole where they think that now the same group that they've been exposing online is censoring their speech online. And all you do is you take these conspiracy theories and put them into a darker part of the internet where they continue to grow and grow and expand and sometimes they go down crazy paths and once again it's of your own doing you create that i guess in a way it's kind of like the streisand effect leftoids did this to themselves in their own arrogance their own ignorance their ego has become too inflated they believe that they control popular culture that they control ideas but what they don't seem to realize is that doesn't last forever and if you overstep boundaries if you step too far eventually the elastic is going to snap back we've seen it happen throughout human history and we're seeing it again when you start advocating and defending criminals and putting criminals on pedestals defending the burning and looting of black communities as racial justice when you start to attack police officers when you attack normal Americans and concerned parents as racists and fascists when you attack men for being men when you try to rewrite biology when you introduce absolutely deplorable inappropriate content being pushed on children and promoted to children when you take a limited pro-choice moderate view that the majority of Americans might agree with within the first trimester and expand it to the second trimester and the third trimester and in many cases even after when you advocate against border security and not only border security but you're basically advocating for totally open borders and sanctuary states eventually people are gonna start to fall off eventually people are gonna say enough is enough I am not with any of this and that is exactly what we are seeing and once the left starts to use the youngins the Gen Zers and whatever the next generation is after that well then you really 
really know the cultural pendulum is starting to swing it's starting to shift it's starting to accelerate and pick up momentum and the left is really starting to lose the culture war and that's what we're seeing here folks there's been a lot of polling data a lot of studies where we're starting to see gen z trending towards the right i mean millennials were the most leftist of any western generation and it seems as though it's already shifting quite significantly although to be completely honest with you i'm worrying at least a little bit as we start to lose the older generation and the boomers and millennials start to make up the majority of the electorate how far are politics going to go in that environment well hopefully gen z and the generation below are enough to provide a counterbalance because lord knows we'll need it and it seems as though that might actually be the case the left is losing its cultural power and they only have themselves to blame for that that's what i got for you guys though hopefully you enjoyed this video if you did make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe to the channel like i always say i gotta get back to work these videos won't record themselves i want to thank you guys for watching and i will see you on the next one